Hey there guys, so uh, today is going to be kind of a short little Wild Wednesday. We're going to do our part two for the insects, which is basically the last of my cases. And I think just for the fun of it, I also have a case full of arachnids. So we'll talk a little bit about them at the end as well. But let's go ahead and take a look at uh, this case over here. Hopefully you can see uh, there's quite an assortment in here. Ignore the one moth. Off again. Huh? Try and keep that glare off again. Uh, let's see. So you're talking about the moth? Yeah, ignore the moth. Oh, ignore the moth. The That's moth it. I just put in there because I ran out of room in my other moth case. But, oh no, I gotta sneeze. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Shoot. Oh, right. Sorry. So, in this one we have kind of some uh, some weird groups here. Uh, I guess we'll talk about these guys first. These are the phasmids. These are the walking sticks. And so both of these, unfortunately, are both males. Uh, this is our giant walking stick, largest walking stick found in the United States. They are found here in Texas, usually around the Austin, San Antonio region. And uh, this is a northern walking stick, which is what we basically find just about anywhere. And how you can tell they're boys is if you look at the very end of their uh, rump here, their abdomen, they have what look like little claspers on there. And so they use that to hold on to the girl, to the female. Now... This guy right here looks kind of like a uh, walking stick, but you'll see that uh, he has some weird little raptorial appendages, which basically means grabbing appendages up here. And so what this one is, is this is a Brunner's Mantid. So this is a praying mantis, and I always like to ask, how many legs do insects have? You're gonna say six, right? And I always like to then ask, how many legs do praying mantises have? And so if you look here, it looks like one, two, three, and four. Only four, but something you need to know is insects do not have arms. They just have modified legs. So these little legs up here that look like arms, well, they're in fact legs. So these guys do have six legs. Now, uh, the Brunner's mantid here is really cool. They're also called grass mantids. Uh, they're parthenogenic, which means there are no boys in the species. There are only girls. So they basically lay clones of themselves. So that's a pretty neat one. You can find them here in San Angelo as well. And we have a little ghost mantid right here. This was a former pet of mine. Uh, a little bit more ornate than the mantids we get here. Right below that we have a Carolina mantid, which is very common here. Then we have a couple species of small little ground mantids, which if you look closely, you'll probably see them running around when it's a little bit darker out. Right below them, we have the roaches. And so here's a big hissing roach, a, a dusky cave roach, and here's some native little sand roaches and things like that. Uh, all of these are put together because uh, it's, well, actually no, it's now it's, uh, the uh, roaches and the mantids are very closely related. They have these swiveling heads, which is not found in any other group, so they're put very close together. And even more interesting, right next to uh, the roaches here is we have termites. Termites used to be their own order, but now they're actually lumped in with the cockroaches. So you can basically think of termites as some very uh, specially adapted uh, cockroaches. So they are in the same group. Now below that we have some of the orthopterous insects. Uh, these are, I like to think, is your jumping insects. They have the really big legs, so grasshoppers, katydids, uh, crickets, things of that nature. And so these big ones right here, these are probably some of my favorites. These are called the Romelades. Uh, these are the lubber grasshoppers, and so the horse lubber right here with the nice pretty red wings. Uh, this is an Everglades lubber found near the Florida Everglades down that area. I just uh, want to get a really close look at that thing because that's yeah. got some very pretty patterning they on it. They are very pretty. Very large. They typically don't fly very much. The horse lubbers here mostly use their wings as a threat display. And then these little lubbers right here, you can find all around San Angelo. You'll notice they have no wings at all. They just got some really big, chonky back legs. Let's see. This one is another fun one. This one is actually a uh, horned lizard mimic. So it mimics a horny toad. Uh, when you, this one is a little bit deflated now, but when they're uh, alive and moving around, they do look like little horned lizards. They also look like rocks running around. And let's see. Over here, we have some really weird crickets. First one that my finger's right next to, this is a mole cricket. And one of the coolest things about mole crickets is if you look at their little front legs here, if I can get a, they almost look like a little comb. That's almost exactly what an actual mole's handprints look like, or hands look like. And so these guys are designed for digging. You can usually find them around crops and fields. This next one here uh, has a lot of different names. Some people they call them potato bugs, uh, children of the earth. Uh, this is a Jerusalem cricket. And so this is a very large cricket. 
I've never seen one around here, but I have heard that you can find them around here. And then we have a little cave cricket right next to that. And let's see if I have some of our miscellaneous insects here. The next one we're gonna get to are our dragon and damsel flies. <laughs> so let me take the case lid off this case real quick. Oh man, picking up all that stuff yesterday. I know it's going crazy. My really? allergies. Allergies getting you. Yeah, all those leaps and all my garden. Alrighty, so in here we have a couple different groups. Uh, uh, if you ever see a big dragonfly that usually has any kind of stripes on the wings here, that's usually a uh, libidelity. It's a skimmer. And if you ever see just very large dragonflies with very little patterning on the wings, these are your aeshnids. So these are their, this is an emperor dragonfly, very large. Uh, we got widow skimmers, both male and female in here. Uh, some tiny little amber wings, these little itty bitty guys. And so most dragonflies we're pretty familiar with if we see one. Uh, these guys are top tier predators. They're flying around, they're grabbing and eating whatever they can. Uh, they are definitely some of the fastest insects flying around and they're very, very good at it. Next to them, we have the, oh, I just had a brain fart, the uh, damselflies. <laughs> and so the damselflies are their close cousins, but uh, they're not as uh, fast. They're a little bit more on the dainty side. And so these guys kind of flutter around. Uh, we have a couple of large species and a couple decent pretty species here. These really nice kind of emerald colored ones, the uh, ebony wings. You have to go a little bit more north of where we are to find them. But we do have some of these American ruby spots right here. And these guys, they are also predators. They just kind of flutter and fly around and grab whatever they can. Uh, usually you'll see the nice little blue ones all over the place. Alrighty, so that's uh, these are odinates, uh, odinata. Get some close-ups of these guys real fast. Not too many of those, because as it turns out, catching dragonflies is a lot of work. Uh, you have to do a lot of running around, and you have to have some really good nets, and uh, eh, sometimes I'm a little bit lazy on the field. There's some really pretty uh, magenta-colored ones that I've been trying to catch for years, and they just keep eluding me. I can find them, I just can't catch them. Alrighty. This next one are going to be what are called the hemipterans, and um, used to be homopterans as well, but uh, these are the true bugs, and so these are the, what you would actually call a bug. But most people just call any insect a bug. So I guess we'll start over here with what used to be homoptera. That's uh, the cicadas and a couple other weird little insects that fall in there. Uh, right here at the top we have the dog day cicada. These are the ones that are out singing when it's like 110 degrees out, usually in August. And right below that we have the, uh, the apuncha or the prickly pear cicada. They specialize feeding on, well, prickly pears and they have the kind of the nice little uh, white lines on them. Almost looks like a little bullseye on their butt. Then we also have a few other smaller species of cicada. This is not a baby, this is just a completely different species, very, very tiny. And I think we found one of those on the porch the other day. All right, so now we have our hemipterans. These are our true bugs. Uh, I guess I'll start up here at the top with these really impressive sized ones. Uh, these are bellistomatids. These are the uh, giant water bugs. Uh, they're also called toe biters. These guys are predators, and if you remember, it does look like they only have four legs, but these little arms right here are actually legs as well. These guys swim in the water and they're ambush predators, so when something swims by them, they grab them, and they have this really long proboscis, which they insert and start injecting uh, digestive enzymes, so they basically drink their meal, which uh, most of the hemipterans, actually I think all the hemipterans, they have piercing sucking mouth parts. And so here's another little bellistomatid. This is the uh, ferocious water bug. Not quite as big, but these ones are a little bit more uh, active predators. They swim around. I love how the small one is called the ferocious one. <laughs> <laughs> well, these, the big ones are just kind of lazy. They just sit there and wait. Oh, these ones okay. are out hunting. I got you. These little itty bitty guys right here, these are called ambush bugs. They might be a little bit hard to see. I'll see if I can bring one up a little bit closer to the camera. So these are ambush bugs. They sit on usually yellow flowers. And they, uh, well, they just wait and ambush things. They're a type of a uh, reduvid. Right below that, we have what's called a toad bug. And a toad bug is a little hemipteran that you'll find right around the edge of water. And they just kind of walk around and hunt anything they find. They look a lot like uh, nacorids, which I cannot remember. They're another type of water bug. From what I'm seeing, the top of the front of it at least kind of just looks like the front of a 
toad, looks like toad eyes. Yeah, they hop around, they do have some nice little protruding eyes right there. And they do jump a little bit, so they will be hopping around, moving just little tiny jumps. <laughs> focus, camera, focus. Yeah, these tiny things are kind of a pain. This is why I don't pin very many hemipterans, because a lot of them are very, very tiny. So I guess while we're talking about water things, we'll come down to this one here at the bottom. This is a water scorpion. It is not a true scorpion. It looks kind of like a praying mantis in the water, and that's basically what they do. They have these little raptorial appendages. They sit and wait. Uh, you can usually find these guys in really rough water, like out in the desert. They kind of just fly to it. And they have this really long tube at the end. So this is a breathing tube. This is how these guys can just sit in the water, stick their butt up, and they can breathe through that. Kind of like a snorkel, but on your rear end. Mm -hmm. And then here's another tiny little water scorpion right there, itty bitty guy. Let's see, this one is a wheel bug. This is our largest species of reduvid, which are our assassin bugs. Um, they're called wheel bugs because they have this little, almost looks like a cog or a gear on their back. Oh, cool. And so these ones are good to have in your garden. They do hurt when they bite you. You can see that piercing, sucking mouth part right there. Hopefully you can see it. There we go. And these guys, they just uh, prowl the tops of trees and they hunt anything that usually uh, messes with your garden. So they are good to have around. Now these guys look very similar. These are what are called the leaf-footed bugs. And so you can see their legs are a little bit kind of flat in the back. This one usually feeds on agave or similar plants, but these are in the family Coridae. This one, I think, has some slightly better leaves on the back of its foot. You can see they're very, very flat legs, and they just kind of fan out, which is where leaf-footed bugs come from. And so most of these guys are going to be just miscellaneous families. You've got milkweed bugs, things like that. A lot of different size of assassin bugs. Stink bugs right here. We're all familiar with stink bugs. We've probably smelt one at one time or another. Not very fun. And so, uh, not too much to say on this case. I've never been a huge fan of the hemipterans, but they are a pretty big group. And uh, once again, they are the only ones that are considered the true bugs. Alrighty. So, before... Before we move on, I just yeah. want to say that little bug right there looks like Sputnik. This one right here? Yeah. So these are one of the water, sky, uh, water skates. We have Velids oh, and Jareds. See, see. These guys skate across the top of water, eating whatever they can catch. It's actually, uh, there's one family in this group that uh, is the only insect that lives in the ocean. They're uh, sea skaters, so it's a type of uh, pond skate that lives on the ocean. And that's the only insect that really lives anywhere near uh, in the ocean. That's what our talk is today, guys. Went over a few of these cases. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to see you guys next time, and hopefully you learned something. Alrighty, guys. Bye-bye.